Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Welcome back to your PSC 634 lecture, Pharmacology of Anti-Effective Agents. So for this week, we're gonna discuss on antifungal agents. So here is the learning objective for this week lecture. So you should be able to understand the mechanism of action as well as the resistance of antifungal agents. Besides, you need to be able to describe the therapeutic uses of antifungal agents in the context of treatment for fungal diseases. And then you need to develop knowledge of the common and unique toxicities of antifungal agents. Besides, you should be able to understand the drug-drug interaction that can occur with the use of azole antifungal agents. So to cover all these four learning objectives, I divided this, uh, this week lecture into two videos. The first video gonna discuss on the three main class of antifungal agents, and then the second video, the remaining three of the classes. The significant difference between fungal cells and our human cells are the present of these fungal cell walls. There are also uh, a small structural difference in terms of the plasma membrane. As you can see in the diagram, the blue color here represents that most of the uh, strokes that are found in the plasma membrane in the fungal cell is the echostrol compared cholesterol in our human cells. So, the cell wall of most fungi is composed of monoprotein, rigid layer of complex polysaccharide beta-1,3 and beta-1,6 link glucan as well as chitin. So these cell walls offer mechanical strength and act as a barrier protecting this fungus from the uh, hostile environment. So underneath these cell walls uh, lies the plasma membrane that made up of phospholipid bilayer similar to our human cells but the differences is the agostrol, which is the major sterol found in the fungal plasma membrane. So this agostrol and also this plasma membrane act to maintain the membrane integrity in the same capacity as cholesterol in our human cells. So agostrol has unique structural properties that being targeted for many antifungal medications. One of them is a broad spectrum antifungal drug that called amphotericin B. Amphotericin B, or known as M4B, is an amphotericin polyene macrolides. So polyene refers that this drug containing many double bonds, as shown in this picture, that can blend well with agostrol in the fungal cell membrane. And macrolides, the blue color compound here, uh, referring to this large electron ring of more than 12 atoms. Uh, besides, we call it macrolides, sometimes we known as mycosamine group of amphotericin B. So, they require at molecules of this amphotericin B by binding to agostrol in the fungal cell membrane. The binding interaction between the agostrol, the green color molecule here, with the mycosamine group of M4B, which is the blue compound structure, along the double bond bridge side of amphotericin B structure, they can form a pore that cause a, a rapid leakage of intracellular ions as well as the macromolecules. So this uh, efflux of this intracellular ion as well as the macromolecule may lead to fungal cell death. So means that this M4B is a fungal cidal. Because of this mechanism of action, M4B remain the antifungal agent with the broader spectrum of action. It has activity against the clinically significant yeast including the candida albicans as well as the cryptococcal neoformans. Besides, amphotericin B also has fungicidal activity against organisms that cause endemic mycosis including the histoplasma capsulatum as well as the pathogenic moles aspergillus fumigators. So, um, M4B is poorly absorbed from the GI tract. Thus, oral formulation of M4B only effective to eradicate fungi within the lumen of the tract, and it cannot be used for systemic disease. That is why 
most of these drugs are formulated in a file form for every route of administration. This drug also preferred to be administered via infusion, which 90% of it bound to the serum protein. It is widely distributed in most of the tissue and excreted slowly in the urine over a period of several days. That is why the serum half life approximately about 15 days. Unfortunately, V also can bind to cholesterol molecule that found in human cell membranes, particularly in the renal vasculature as well as the renal epithelial cells. So it means that this drug can cause nephrotoxicity. And you need to know that because of this nephrotoxicity activity, M4B is typically reserved for the treatment of severe systemic infection that require a rapid response only. So m 4 tracing B used as initial induction regimen to rapidly reduce the fungal burden and then it can be replaced by azol drug of uh, antifungal agent. So this induction therapy such as uh, to treat the severe fungal pneumonia, cryptococcal meningitis as well as endemic mycosis such as histoplasmosis. So resistance to m 4 tracing B can be occur by either decreasing the membrane concentration of agosterol or modifying this sterile target molecule to reduce its affinity for the drugs. Okay, so this phenomena consequently able to impair binding of this drug to the agosterol and hence may cause therapeutic failure of M4B. Aside that, some of the adverse effects can be seen from this drug such as uh, infusion-related reactions which are nearly universal and patients may experience fever, chills, muscle spasm, vomiting, headache as well as hypotension. So pre-medication with antipyretic agents such as ibuprofen or panadol as well as antihistamine ripperidine or corticosteroid can be helpful to prevent these uh, side effects. So another antifungal agent that can bind to agosterol that causing leakage of intracellular components and as well as the uh, macromolecule, we call it as nystatin. So as you can see in this picture, nystatin has the same mechanism of action as amphotericin B, which they can form a pore and lead to fungal cell death. However, nystatin is more toxic compared to amphotericin B. And because of this, it cannot be used systemically. So additionally, nystatin is also not absorbed from the mucous membrane as well as the skin, which is why the use of nystatin has been limited to the treatment of superficial candida infection of the mouth, skin, as well as in the vagina. So you can form nystatin cream or oral suspension in the market that solely to treat this candida infection. Another unique component of the fungal cells is the presence of beta glucan fungal cell wall. So this beta glucan fungal cell wall serves as an attractive pharmacological target for antifungal drugs. Specifically, some antifungal drug has been designed to target this enzyme that located in the fungal plasma membrane. So as shown in this picture is the green color one. So this uh, enzyme are responsible for the production of beta-1,3 glucans and we call it this enzyme as beta-1,3 glucan synthase. And what you need to know about this, there is a gene that contained in the beta glucan synthase known as FKS1. So this FKS1 is essential for the catalysis of beta 13 glucan. So what this echinocandine do the, with this uh, structure? So echinocandines will block this FKS1 which inhibit the beta glucan synthase which cause the decrease of beta glucans in the cell walls which reduce the structural integrity and 
may lead to uh, osmotic instability and ultimately cell lysis. So we can say that this echinocandine is a fungicidal class of drug. So fungus such as Candida as well as Aspergillus species, these two species contain beta-1 glucagon which cause these echinocandines are susceptible to eradicate these microbe strains. So Caspofungin, Micafungin and Adilafungin are the only licensed agents in this category of antivagals. So these agents are susceptible to eradicate these two species. So the major advantage of echinocandin relative to other antifungal drugs is their activity against azo-resistant candida as well as azo-resistant aspergillus species. Another one advantage is the beta glucosynthase is absent in our human cells. Unlike the other antifungals, echinocandins have relatively low potential for toxicity and low serious drug interactions. So, Casporfungin is currently licensed for empiric antifungal therapy during neutropenia, esophageal and invasive candidiasis, and as well as it can use as salvage therapy to invasive aspergillus patients who are failed to respond to amphotericin B and not as a primary therapy. Meanwhile, Micafungin is indicated for mucocutaneous candidiasis as well as prophylaxis of candida infection in bone, bone marrow transplant patients. Meanwhile, Anidola fungin is approved for use in esophageal and invasive candidiasis. So the most common drug interactions for this uh, group of echinocandin is the cyclosporin. So cyclosporin can increase the bioavailability of echinocandin. Uh, let me recap back. Cyclosporin is an immunosuppressor medication that used in organ transplant to prevent organ rejection in people who have received a liver, kidney or heart transplant. Alright, before we have a short break, let's have a quick recap of what you have learned in this video. So in this video, we discuss on these three classes of antifungal agents that targeted on the cell walls in synthesis as well as the cell membrane integrity. So echinocandins is the only cell uh, antifungal drugs that act on cell wall synthesis. The drugs such as Anidula fungi, Casporfungin and Micafungin. Meanwhile, Amphotericin B and Nystatin act on the cell membrane integrity. So in the next video, we're going to discuss on the other antifungal agent, which is terbinafin that can uh, impair the lanosterol synthesis, azole, which can impair the agosterol synthesis as well as the flu cytosine.